So while we're waiting for this piece to finish curing and for the paint to dry on it, we're going to install the wiring harness for the defrost cable. And here's the harness. It's got a, a single plug and then it has a short cable which goes to the left side of the window and a longer one which goes to the right hand side of the window. We're going to plug that in and temporarily route the cables. Uh, we won't finish tucking them until the window and top is in place so we can judge how long the, uh, the, the leads need to be. Alright, so behind the driver's seat, and you can see here's the seat belt for the driver's seat, right down below here is a little panel. Pull that lever up, flip that out of the way, and there's where our plug is going to go. So we're just going to plug it in and route our two cables uh, to the back. Alright, our piece is all finished up, it's cured. The first thing we're going to do is put the headliner in this groove right here. So, we're going to slide that sucker right in here. Then, we're going to put our piece up, our snap our new piece, our piece in here like so. Get it hooked on the back end. So far so good. This patch seems to be working. Pretty happy about that. Alright, the next step is to get the new top up here and slide this cord all the way through this slot. Now this replacement top doesn't come with the second cord and it goes in that other slot, so we only have to do the one, the one slot. So here we go, we're just going to slide the new one in right here. The next thing is, on both sides, we need to put this elastic strap and tuck it up under this clip right here. There's two push-in rivets on this, this, rubber, this plastic piece right here. We're going to pull up this side, put that in the hole, and tuck it right back. So I'm doing two things. I've got this puller here so I can get on both sides of that plastic. It's fairly thin around it, and I want to tear it. Oh, but look, see, it just pry it up, and woo, she popped out. Beautiful. So pull that up, put the strap in there like I'm going to put it on the rivet or on the expansion piece. There we go, like so. And then back in the hole. Like so. And a little rubber mallet encouragement. So the next thing we have to do is attach this cable to the side, the side uh, of the canopy here. So if that were pushed up there, it would be close to the center here. So what we want to do is take an awl and start poking a hole here, which I've already kind of started. And then you want to stick the awl in a lot further than you think you need to because you're putting a fairly fat screw in there and it won't get started easily unless that hole is kind of big. Also, these holes here were just a little too small for the screws that came out, so I drilled them out a size bigger. So now we're going to put them in there. We're going to start jamming that in the hole, like so. And then start using the T25 to thread it into that neoprene. There we go. Neoprene and canvas hole. So now we have to get uh, this kind of like back post, back corner area tucked in. This cord here must go in this slot here, and then this cord here has to go in this slot here. 
in that order. So we're gonna start with this one here. This one's fairly simple, just roll it around the corner, get it started. But you gotta get it in the slot there, Steven. It really is easy. Okay, get it started in the slot. It is. Come on. There we go. Pull it down. Okay, then we've got to get this cord in here. And I've retracted the top just a little bit so we can see it. Once you retract the top some more, it's harder to get to. But uh, what we're going to do is get the cord started with all this lifted up. And then once it's started, we'll, we'll crank the top back a little bit so we can get this down flush. So let's see if we can do this real time. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. Okay, all right, I'm started in the slot. But now as you see, I've got this tab that needs to be pushed down here. All right, so I've got those two beads started and, and uh, I've lowered the top a little, about halfway. When you're doing this, Make sure that the glass window is sitting on the on the, uh, the upper tray back here so that it doesn't get broken. Okay, you've got to get this tilted back enough to get that bottom screw in with the cable. If you remember, there's the screw and it's got to go down into that hole right there. So here you go, you have the screw down in that bottom hole and you got the cable that uh, kind of just runs up right along this plastic panel. So next one you want to do is get yourself a Sharpie and on this rear bow here, kind of measure from, there's some rivets here. Measure from these rivets on the corners, on both sides, and find your center line. And mark it with a black Sharpie. You'll never be able to see it. Then, what you want to do is you're going to take this black cord here, and it's already got a line here where there's a, a, a seam in it. And there's a dot right here where it's still center line. So just kind of pull it and roll that black piece right there into into your center line mark and then feed that in all the way around okay and do that in a minute and then once actually that's done then we're actually going to jam this in there which is i've also marked the center point on that i'm probably going to start in the center with my mark and just start tapping it in you can see my sharpie mark just start tapping it in from from the center working out so i'm going to do a little bit of this on on video and then i finish the rest of it Offline, see, just kind of pull it, roll it, flip it in the slot. There you go. I'll come back over there to the side in a minute. And actually, after you've done this, you you can double check your uh, your center line and slide it before you start jamming the uh, the uh, the wedge piece, the plastic wedge piece in there. So with the with the plastic edge turned down in there, we've got the this. Uh, ceiling rib, press down there, also the center line. Take a rubber hammer, tap it down in there, and then just keep working your way to both edges. You want to check from time to time to make sure that this didn't kind of pop out over here, but it looks like it's pretty flush in there, so we're just going to keep pressing on both sides until that's done. Okay, the support rubber goes in next, and it's going to go in the next slot down, and if you can see this profile, Short here, long up here, it's gonna go in the channel just like that. I've marked the center line of that, and we're just gonna press that down in place like that, all the way around. Then once when we do that, we're gonna go, we're gonna put some tape. Let's slide that over just a little, don't I? There we go. I'm gonna put a piece of two-sided tape here and here, and uh, that is going to be where th this is going to pop down in just like that, okay? So that'll get glued to there, and then this fabric here will get pushed in there against that tape, and then the, the remaining seal will hold that snug. So my sweaty hands have been touching this rubber seal, and the and this surfaces where everything's going to go. So 
I got me some isopropyl oak alcohol here. I'm just gonna rub that surface there, as well as in here. Make sure that's nice and clean and ready for some adhesive. Obviously this two-sided tape from 3M, and we'll show that to you here in just a second. Now we're laying down this two-sided tape, and uh, we just started at one end, put it right down the middle of this rubber strip, and we're gonna go all the way to the other side. And then we're gonna come back and do exactly the same thing right up under there. The tape we're using is 3M06384, half inch. All right, and as you can see here, all we're doing is now getting it just in the flat, smooth area in this channel here. All right, so we're gonna do that all the way to the other end. So we're gonna pull off the protective strips both of these and we're going to start laying this down. This doesn't have a whole lot of flexibility where it goes so you just pull it down and it will stick right there on that upper one. Just like so. Let's get that all the way around. Okay, good. The other side. Okay. Then we're gonna tuck this upper flap. Let's put that back up. We're gonna tuck this upper flap in just like so. We're gonna just stuff it in there like so. Just make sure that the fabric is, is taut right there. You have to redo it, redo it. There we go. Just make sure that it's snug right here because it's not gonna change. Just pull it a little bit before you tuck it up onto there into the adhesive tape. Just like that, all the way around. All right, time for the last piece here. Uh, if you remember, this went in the channel kind of like that with this bump, with this little rise was up. And once again, let's mark the center of this thing somewhere. There it is. And here's the center here. So now we just gotta push this sucker in all the way around. Instructions from Auto Tops Direct, which are very good, I must add. They've been very, very good. Uh, they actually say you might have to use a putty knife to do this, but as you can see, it's going in by hand quite easily. Also notice that I took the time to clean all the seals. I, I put them in the sink, scrubbed them with soap and water, and then I put a little bit of rubber treatment on all of them to keep them moist and supple. Uh, I used just a, a turtle trim, uh, but you can use them whether it's back to black or armor all or all kinds of stuff. So as you can see, now we're just, gonna, we're just gonna press that sucker in all the way around like it was originally, and we're done with the back end. And before we get too far along here, we can pull some of this protective stuff out of here. There's a little rubber cap on the tab here. Take, pull that off and protect the cap and then put the, put the connector on and just slide it up until it clicks and there you go. We're embarking on the hard part of the cover. So here are the next few steps and now that kind of happened fairly quickly. First thing we're going to do is take this metal aluminum plate which is here, which is masked. I'll tell you about that in a second. Uh, we got to put it on this spring here. Remember we took that shrink tube off of there. We're going to put it on here and wrap it with electrical tape. And then I've already pre-masked this. I'm going to go ahead and mask this because we want to put some spray adhesive 
here, which is going to wrap on there. We're going to put spray adhesive there, and we got to protect the interior and the rest of the car. So uh, let's go ahead and put this spring on here, and. here in Houston where it's so humid. I tried to use uh, two-sided tape and it's just not strong enough. So you do a two-sided or a, an adhesive here and adhesive here. You let it cure a little bit and then it gets really tacky. And you can tack it down where you need. And then you can pull this. You have to kind of pull and stretch this up a little bit as you put the plate in place. So that's going to be a tricky part. I'm going to mask it all off. Um, and then when it's ready, I'm going to go ahead and align all this. And then I'll run the recording when we're putting this in place and putting the black, black, silver, black screws in. All right, I'm going to give this a go real time. If I get frustrated and it takes more time, you'll know that it's not simple. So the first thing we've got to do is get this pivoted in the right position here. So. sure that this bevel right here and that glue line is is good because once you get this plate in place uh, you're not going to have the opportunity to to lift that fabric again fortunately with this contact cement you can lift it and replace it a couple of times glue here but there's a there's a um, product that'll get that off of there and back in here somewhere is the other side of this fabric piece fabric here. Recommend that you cut that off. You can use the aluminum bracket behind here just a guide. Okay. 
go. All right, double check everything. The holes are lined up. There's no bubbles in there. No bubbles in there, okay, good. All right, so now, make sure this cord ends up behind here. All right, so now we're gonna pull, what we're gonna do is we'll pull this in place and we we'll stick the all in here and get in this hole and pull it forward. This gap right here, I think you're going to be able to pull that out when you uh, when you pull the front. Tuck it and pull it down. For the next step, we need to apply adhesive to the, the bottom of the upper edge as well as the front edge of the canvas. And so you can see here, we mask off the bottom as well as the top so we don't get overspray up on top of the uh, canvas. And then we're going to spray the adhesive and let it sit for about five minutes for it to cure. The great thing about this adhesive is once it's actually had that five minute cure, you can actually touch it with your fingers and it doesn't stick to your fingers. But when you stick a piece that, of this, this adhesive to another piece that has the adhesive on it, it, it clings really well. So besides the little bit of precautions that you have to take when you apply it, working with it after it's, it's created and gotten to that tacky point is actually very easy. So once that's done, you have to you start in the corners and you'll have to trim the corners because the corners will bunch up a little bit. So you'll have to trim them up and pull them over the edge to make sure that it's nice and smooth going over the edge. Then, and you also, uh, there's a, the, the corner rubber piece that goes in next has a little clip that picks up in a hole. So make sure that when you fold the canvas over in the corner that it's trimmed short enough not to block that slot. All right, so then keep tucking the rest of the canvas to the center of the, the roof and only pull it snug enough to kind of take out the diagonal wrinkles. You don't want to pull it super tight, just, just enough to pull out the wrinkles. It will be plenty tight, plenty tight once you start closing it. Once you get that all around, then you're going to put that long goofy rubber piece in that has the two upper window seals as well as the one that goes across the front. 
you're going to put a little bead of seal in the corner, which you see here in the picture, and put the screw up in there, and that'll hold everything in place. Make sure you get the, the slot. There's a tab, a metal tab on that corner that has to go into that slot. So slide that in the slot, put the screw in, go to the other side, slide it in the slot, put the screw in. Then you're going to go ahead and put the metal plate that goes along the front edge. Go ahead and put that metal plate in. The seal goes between the plate and the roof and put that in with those uh, six screws. Once you do those six screws, then you're ready to move to the side. All right, last thing to do here other than put the, uh, the fairing back on is, is, is this rubber piece here. So basically, first thing we have to do is remember this little rubber piece that came out of the back here. Uh, I put a little bit of uh, adhesive on it and we're going to pop it up in place just like so. So it'll stay in place. And then this metal piece right here basically slides right here and it will once I get it in place I can slide it further and line up the holes and put the little bitty screws in to uh, to finish that once that's once that's buttoned up there then we just tuck this rubber seal in there and we are done uh, the only thing after that is like I said is gonna put this fairing back on and uh, leave it closed for about a week most of you that follow us here on Roaring Tiger's Garage know that we're very cautious and careful. And we took a lot of precautions to prevent this, this uh, ad spray adhesive from getting on the top. But we have still got some on here, and which just says that it's a, it's a reality that's gonna happen. So we're gonna also show you how to fix this problem. And it's not a big deal, it really isn't. So that's the 3M adhesive. Now I happen to have this 3M general purpose adhesive cleaner here, uh, but the key thing is you're looking for an ingredient that is xylene, xylene. So xylene based uh, adhesive remover. Also in the store where you buy this, you can actually find a spray version of it, uh, adhesive remover or adhesive cleaner next to this, which would work as well, and I'm pretty sure it's xylene based. So uh, the way you do this, is basically take a, take a soft cloth, get some xylene on here, and you can see I put a little bit of tape here on the painted surface to protect it. This is not a paint remover, but you know, why touch paint, paint with, uh, with chemicals and stuff that you don't need to? And you can just kind of dab it on here to soften that glue. All right, and then with the same soft cloth, you can just start kind of rubbing it. This canvas is a very tough, heavy canvas. All right. You'll also see that I have up here a, tooth, a soft bristle toothbrush and my handy dandy plastic lever here. Um, so if you got, in, if you wanted, you could kind of do this to get down into the, the grooves a little bit. You know, until this stuff starts to ball. See, it see how it's balling up right here. It's balling up, and then you can get it off. Okay. Not doing any damage here and then if you got really tough I mean you can use your fingernail the fingernail will work nice because the fingernail is fairly gentle on these surfaces or you could use a you know a soft rounded edge of a plastic and just kind of scrape it. and what that will do is kind of push down on the ribs and kind of get the glue that's down into in the, uh, in, the in the in the ribs of the fabric a little bit so basically we're just I think we're gonna stick with the uh, just a rub it concept here. And as you can see, it's it's coming up fairly nicely. Right. Then, once you're satisfied that you've got it all off, then I recommend that you just take some simple green in another cloth and just, you know, spray it. I'm going to go over this a little bit more here. Spray it, but then just kind of, you know, clean your top with some simple green around on that area to get the, the xylene off of there. All right, then vacuum your top from all your, uh, from all your 
fibers, etc., and you are good to go. There you go, Roaring Tigers fans. A complete removal and installation of a brand new top on a 986 Boxster, um, which now has the beautiful glass window and a defroster. Pretty cool. Uh, we had a couple of things we had to recover from, a, a, a broken plastic bow piece that we fixed, as well as some, some glue on the top. And by the way, even though I recommend a xylene-based product, uh, the manufacturer actually said, just use some gasoline. And then of course, clean it off like we did with the Simple Green. Uh, so gasoline or mineral spirits, uh, any of those things will should actually soften it up so you can just remove it with a cloth. So, Thanks again for joining us here in the cage. We look forward to you on many more videos. Speaking of which, next week we have a busy week. It looks like we're going to be doing the headlight polishing and also the window regulator on the passenger side door. And we'll probably start some of the paint correction next week as well. So those new videos should be coming out very shortly. We look forward to seeing you in the cage. Be sure to like us on Facebook and like us and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. And we will see you again soon.